Okay, well, as you know, uh, health care is a provincial jurisdiction, uh, but the federal government does, of course, transfer funding for health care, and we've made a commitment to transfer, to increase that transfer uh, by 6% a year so that the province can provide service uh, to Islanders. What we've also done as well nationally is uh, to, as an incentive to attract more uh, doctors and nurses to rural areas, and Prince Edward Island, of course, is considered a rural area. Uh, we will provide up to $40,000 uh, basically a grant to, to new doctors uh, uh, to pay off their student loan and $20,000 to nurses uh, to pay off their student loans if they practice in rural areas of the country. Go. I think health care in rural areas is very important and I think our federal government needs to be a leader on that front and in the Liberal platform in this election we are committing uh, major investments into rural health care, mainly in terms of attracting doctors, nurses and nurse practitioners into rural areas, whether it's by helping them pay off their student loans uh, to encourage them to, to come and practice in rural communities or investing millions into our rural uh, health centers or rural community hospitals. Part of this is a provincial matter. Health care is a big concern and everyone deserves equal access to health care. I'm worried that the current government will try to balance the budget like the way that the Liberals did when they were in power. They may end up downloading the debt on the backs of Islanders. Egmont has already paid for this by having the O'Leary and Tyne Valley hospitals close. Perhaps the priority should be hospitals and not fighter jets. And with the current health accord expiring in 2014, we need strong leadership. Jack Layton and the NDP are putting forward practical ideas to modernize services that don't put big pressures on the budget. One thing that Stephen Harper's conservatives have done is allowed for-profit clinics to flourish, which puts a drain on the public system. He's also extended monopoly rights of brand named drug companies. And this increases system-wide health costs. Related to this, something that the NDP feels strongly about is to have a national pharmacare program. There's an economist named Marc-André Gagnon who has stated that we can save billions of dollars by doing this alone because we would have more purchasing power. Uh, plus, there's so many people that do not have medical insurance. The cost of their medication would go down drastically. We would be able to buy generic drugs. People that do have medical insurance should effectively lower their premiums as well. And um, another thing, Stephen Harper is only willing to train a hundred doctors for the five million people who do not currently have a doctor. Jack Layton is wanting to train a thousand two hundred doctors and six thousand nurses. We need to make the people of this country healthy for our future. Go. I think um, the problem that we're experiencing here with that question is the same problem that we have with a whole bunch of other questions. That we're not examining the question in any serious uh, manner and looking for some sort of action that is sustainable. So a person might think that the uh, that Islanders are getting their share of health care and I think that would be okay to argue for a place that has a, a very small population spread over a large area our actual level of health care is uh, is pretty good uh, someone who was in northern Ontario for example uh, wouldn't have anything like the health care options that we have here on PEI I think it's the bigger question about health care that we're ignoring in this election and that is is what we're doing sustainable? And uh, I think the obvious answer to that is absolutely no. Uh, we are going to have to have, start having meaningful conversations, and this is from the Green Party platform, about things like prevention. 
um, how do we get all these kids in a school like this um, uh, participating in physical activity every day? How do we get older people? What sort of facilities? What sort of walking tracks are out there for those people? Then we also have to have meaningful end-of-life discussions. Um, how far do we want to um, pursue a medical technology that can keep, pe keep people alive towards the end of the life just because we can. And I think if we have a more reasonable debate that doesn't just involve demonizing the other person and criticizing the amount of money they want to spend, um, we can um, get much more out of our healthcare system. I am in support uh, of the third cable to Prince Edward Island, and I am on record as saying that. Uh, we have been working with the province uh, on their numbers and on this project, and uh, when re-elected, I will continue to work with the province to ensure that uh, PEI has the energy security that it needs. The electrical cable uh, for PEI is very crucial. Uh, for the for economic development in our province. Uh, first of all, we have a, an opportunity here in Prince Edward Island to be a world leader in terms of renewable energy. And an electricity cable like uh, the one that was promised by the Paul Martin government in 2005 is exactly what Prince Edward Island uh, needs to, to be that, that world leader in renewable energy. However, with Stephen Harper's attitude, um, this has been cut and it just shows again that Stephen Harper has his back uh, to Prince Edward Islanders and to uh, Atlantic Canadians. And this this uh, energy, <coughs> excuse me, this energy cable, uh, it, like I said, is crucial uh, for Prince Edward Island. Uh, is committed to funding that underwater cable um, to allow Prince Edward Island to compete uh, on a world stage in terms of uh, renewable energy. Another electrical cable would be helpful. Jack Layton is in support of green projects such as this, but I think it would be better to develop our wind energy and become self-sufficient in power. We could, for example, use one of the existing cables to export power instead of buying it from New Brunswick. It's also useful to note that the cable was part of the infrastructure program between the provi provincial and federal governments. The cable was apparently, or so we've heard, was not considered in the current budget. The province thought it had been, which made them look bad. We will have to wait and see what the budget looks like if we became government and what kind of mess the books are in to see whether funds are available. There might be a lot of backroom deals that we don't know anything about at, at this time. Okay, I, I think I'm gonna change the question around a little bit if I could, frame it a little differently. Uh, from the, uh, if we, we're, there's no possibility of the Green Party getting elected. So we don't have to worry about that in any which way. Um, so, uh, I guess the hypothetical, I guess we could answer it, but no, I would not support the, uh, the third cable. It is a possibility, but again, we've got to look at the bigger picture on PEI, and we have to look at the bigger picture in the country. Let's start with the cable itself. People have this idea that the uh, cable is somehow supplying us with green power. Where is the power coming from? Point LaPro. Point LaPro is as far from green power as you can get as the Japanese people could now attest. So there's all sorts of problems with nuclear power. Um, and the funny thing is in this country that we cannot have a sensible debate about electricity. So for example, people will talk about nuclear power and how cheap it is. Has anybody costed into, the, into nuclear power? The breakdowns in LaPro, what are we going to do with the nuclear material after? Um, these in effect are all subsidies to nuclear power. Why can we not give subsidies then to islanders, to people across this country to do things that would make sense right now? Solar water heaters, for example. We could save thousands and thousands and thousands of watts of electricity that are being used now to heat electricity if we used solar water heaters. There's been many studies out that will show that within 50 miles basically of the Canadian border, uh, there is not a Canadian that has to heat water with anything but the sun. 
if we wanted to go that route. So by using conservation, by changing around the model and what we do, um, I think it would be much more sensible to reduce our reliance on electricity rather than continually working towards building more infrastructure, getting more so that we can uh, use all we want. Agriculture is vital to our island economy and I'm aware of the challenges that farmers have faced. That's why we put additional money into business risk management programs to assist farmers when the marketplace doesn't give them a fair return. I believe that the long-term solution is better market access and that's why our government is working on trade agreements uh, right around the world uh, for our agricultural products. We have also uh, reaffirmed our commitment uh, to the protection of our supply management system because that system is working well for farmers. Uh, with the world population expected to exceed $9 million by 2050, increased food production, of course, is vital to, to survival. We have spent millions of dollars on research and market development to assist farmers to meet this challenge. Uh, we've supported project, products that would diversify uh, the farms here on Prince Edward Island, and uh, we've uh, supported research that will take uh, ideas that farmers have uh, through the research, through product development, through commercialization, and that's how you create real jobs within the farm industry. Our primary industries are key components uh, here in the riding of Egmont. Uh, they contribute to everything we do every day. They put food on our table, um, they feed families, um, and they also create work for thousands of people here in Egmont. And I think the agriculture sector uh, needs to be paid more attention. Um, the federal government has neglected uh, farms on Prince Edward Island, I believe. There's been major budget cuts recently uh, into agriculture, and a liberal government would uh, take a look at all programs through agriculture and would uh, would look at these programs and and look at them from the farm up. Uh, too often we look at farming uh, and fishing, uh, Ottawa down, and it doesn't work that way because people in Ottawa are not out here in the fields. Um, things like AgriFlex needs to be looked at and, and needs to be returned to its original mandate which, which was to provide uh, uh, programs based on, uh, on regions. As you know, a farm here in Prince Edward Island is not the same as a farm uh, in rural Alberta. There are a lot of variables, a lot of differences, and those things need to be looked at from, from the farm up. The farm issue is complex. Farmers must be consulted to find a proper solution, which isn't being done enough currently. The farm safety programs can be helpful but the federal-provincial agreement for administration of these programs needs to be cancelled and redone. Farmers need a better program without monopolies. The current program, I feel there's a conflict of interest. The PEI Farm Health and Safety Program has a problem where, on one hand, they're selling insurance, and on the other hand, they're penalizing farmers for not having it. I would be in favor of a national food security program to get farmers back on the land and work towards self-sufficiency in PEI. I don't know if people realize that if we had a major catastrophe in this province that we only have about one month's worth of food. You only need to go to the stores after a major storm to see how empty the shelves are when semi-trucks can't get across the bridge. Also, farmers in Canada cannot compete with subsidies received by American and European farmers. So they don't get what they should to make a living. 